Hi everyone and a happy new year. I hope you all are having a fantastic start to 2021 and I'm really really excited to share with you guys um, I guess like my first uh, video book recommendation of the new year because this is a project that I am so so excited about and I genuinely um, I don't know for me I just am genuinely excited for when I get to go into this classroom that I'll be working with and sort of beginning this project and I can't wait to see sort of the end goal that I'm envisioning for this uh, big kind of culminating project that I have planned with my students. So if you happen to watch my last video that I posted sort of my uh, final book recommendation of 2020 over on my YouTube channel, I shared at the end of that video sort of a big project that I have, um, an idea that I had that I wanted to work with um, specifically with our third grade bilingual students. and. If you don't know, I'm very fortunate because in my building we have a bilingual program. So in my specific building, we have grades two through five bilingual. And I'm also very fortunate because I have an aunt and uncle who are both bilingual teachers. One's a second grade teacher and the other one is a third grade bilingual teacher and they also work in my building. And I just, I love, one of my passions, and I, I feel like I really found this passion probably about two years ago when I really first started going into classrooms and um, doing lessons specific at that time to zones of regulation and helping to roll that program out in some of our classes um, as well, you know, building wide throughout the whole school. But in doing that and going in every week, I realized just how much I genuinely love going into the classrooms. And it, I mean, for me, it's very fulfilling because I love teaching students about um, their emotions and teaching them about coping skills and strategies they can use when it comes to like self-regulation and um, handling their feelings in a positive way that's gonna, you know, over time help them versus, you know, scenarios that they might encounter where they might act, you know, in a way that could potentially create a worse problem for themselves. So that's one thing I love, but I also love it because it gives me the opportunity to kind of get out there in my school community and let students recognize, you know, who I am. They can sort of develop a rapport with me, but I'm also able to develop a rapport with so many more students than I would, you know, just beyond my role as a school psychologist, you know, beyond just working with, you know, my typical students that I work with, um, you know, for counseling and for special education. But it lets me, you know, meet a whole new variety of students and, um, and it's really neat when you get to, over time, learn the students' names and watch them grow from, you know, when I maybe start working with them in second grade to when they become fifth graders and just seeing, you know, how much they've grown as an individual, um, which is for me really exciting. But I'm so excited because I, throughout this past year, have a few times gone into my aunt's classroom, who's a third grade bilingual uh, teacher. And I've done a few lessons with the students on, you know, Day of the Dead. We did a lesson for, um, Kind of wrapping up Hispanic Heritage Month and talking about you know a famous singer, um, a Mexican American singer, Selena Quintanilla, and that was sort of our huge you know project that we did wrapping up Hispanic Heritage Month and talking about you know what why do we celebrate this month and what does it mean? And one thing I love so much about um, my aunt, who is the third grade teacher, is that she genuinely lives and breathes social emotional learning with her students. Like she sees the value in it, she understands the importance of it, and she always, you know, when we talk, she always tells me how for her that's really the priority before you get to the academics because you really can't get to the academics if you're not addressing your students' social and emotional needs first. And I have so much respect for her um, because of, you know, her sort of um, philosophy in terms of what she views as the most important part of her classroom. And for her, she does such a good job of talking to the students about grit. And, you know, in the beginning of the year, they talk a lot about what is grit? What does it mean? She talks a lot with her students about um, having a growth mindset and persisting, um, overcoming. They recognize and celebrate when they make a mistake in that classroom. And the students know that mistakes are only gonna help them grow as a person and as a learner. And I, I just love that. So when I reached out to my aunt over winter break, I talked to her a little bit about sort of this idea that I had and it wasn't fully in the works but I had kind of a gist of what I was hoping to accomplish with this project and when I talked to her about it she immediately responded with I love this idea and it was fantastic because she also right away was like this ties in so well with their um what I need to work with them on in writing related to expository writing and teaching them about that so I love it because it tackles academics it tackles uh, social emotional skills because we're going to be talking about 
um, having grit, determination, perseverance. What does it mean to um, have a goal, have a dream and get to that dream? And, you know, it's not going to be an easy ride, but how can you work hard towards um, getting to that sort of end goal and achieving that big dream that you have to aspire to be? So I love that aspect of it, but I also love the aspect of it in that it is all about highlighting um, Hispanics that have made a profound impact on society, you know, in the world. And I think that it's so important for our, you know, for any student to feel, um, you know, recognized and feel heard, but also to feel relatable to, you know, books and to their culture and celebrating their cultures, you know, not just obviously Hispanics, but all cultures and all ethnicities and, you know, showing students positive role models who are just like them and, you know, who were just like them one day sitting in the classroom and look at them now and all the great, amazing things that they are doing for humanity, doing for the world, doing for us, whether it's in entertainment, in politics, in, um, you know, just being a philanthropist. There's so many amazing role models out there and I want our students to learn about some of these individuals and realize that, wow, this person is just like me. Maybe they were born in the same country that I was born in, or they struggled to learn a new language like I did, or, you know, whatever the case might be. I want them to feel connected to influential people who have made their mark on the world. And I want them to know that they can achieve those things as well with hard work, with grit, with determination, with a flexible mindset and being a growth mindset thinker. And um, that's one thing, again, that I just love about my aunt who's a third grade bilingual teacher because she lives and breathes this with her students. They practice it. She has developed, my gosh, such an amazing community with her students related to the cl um, the climate and culture of that classroom. And it's it's awesome to see. And, and, I, and I get to see this, you know, year after year when I work with her. Last year was really my first year that I started going into her classroom. Um, I would go in every Friday and we would do an SEL lesson with the students, myself and my student intern at the time. And um, I would also go into, you know, other classrooms as well, a few of the other second grade bilingual classrooms. And it was just such a fun way to help also connect with, you know, my colleagues and be able to collaborate with, you know, fellow teachers in my building. But again, just connecting with students and celebrating our culture. And, you know, for me, I'm Puerto Rican and I, I love it. I love um, growing up, you know, in a big close knit Puerto Rican family. And I love how my parents have instilled, you know, that love of our culture and our kind of heritage. And I want our students, especially, you know, the students that I get to work with in our bilingual program to really, really feel inspired by their cultures and to feel inspired by their family stories and um, recognizing that, you know, their families have aspirations and dreams and they can too. And I, I just, I'm so excited for this project. So before I continue to ramble about that, I wanted to share with you guys um, the books that I purchased recently at Amazon and sort of my end goal for this project. So if you can't tell, I'm very passionate about social emotional learning and um, cultures and recognizing for our students, um, kind of helping them feel connected and feel sort of um, inspired to want to be, you know, better learners and to really show up to school every single day committed and growing their brains. So that's hopefully what I will accomplish as well through this project. But the first book that I purchased on Amazon was this book, it's called Dreamers and hopefully I'm not um, butchering the name, but it's by Juji Morales. And she, I love this book. And when I was, I received these yesterday, um, I ordered them this past week during winter break on Amazon and they arrived yesterday. So they actually arrived a day earlier than they were supposed to. But this book I love when I saw this on Amazon and I kind of was reading the blurb about it. I thought, wow, that's a really cute book because it's kind of the title of the name Dreamer. So the book is about um, a mother and a son who come to a new country no knowledge of English. The son is just a little, you know, an infant, a little baby. And the mom, you know, is kind of going through her journey of being in a new land, a new language, and, you know, making mistakes and overcoming those mistakes. And at the end of the book, they discover um, the library. And it kind of creates this huge um, sort of realization for the mom of how amazing the library is. And how you can learn so much and, and I just love that and I especially love that you know obviously for the aspect of in teaching students about literacy but words and in the book it's kind of it, the book is written in English but there's Spanish words kind of mixed throughout it which I love and um, 
one thing unfortunately not so much this year because of the pandemic but in the past years my aunt and uncle one thing i love about what they've done is they really help kind of connect their students to the community and teaching their students and the students families about um resources that we have in our community like the library and in the past what they would do was they would actually take a field trip with their students to the library so they would get a bus and the students you know with the teachers and chaperones they would go to the library and they would help their students get library cards which I thought that was so amazing that they you know would take the time to do that and um you know teaching also the families about this resource that we have and the library and why it's so important and all the you know our local library um again unfortunately with the pandemic it kind of changed a lot of things but they do so many um activities well they'll have like craft nights and read alouds and they do read alouds virtually with the when the pandemic started last year or this past school year they would do um read alouds where a librarian would read a book to the students and they could log on and, and watch the um the story but i i love that and i love this book because i think this is a really great way especially for young students to introduce to them and to their families about the library and all the amazing resources that you can get there and you know of course when we expose our students to books and um they learn so much not just through the pictures but it builds so much their vocabulary and you know you can really instill the love of reading and letting them know that you can you know go to endless places you know you might not have the means to be traveling and going to all these different you know amazing locations in your life but through books you can take some really fun vacations and explore the world through literacy and this book kind of is sort of an introduction to that concept but i love again how the book is about dreamers and you know coming to someplace new and struggling and overcoming challenges and obstacles with being a part of something greater like being a part of um kind of a I'm trying to think of like the word like like a rally so to speak where they got involved um so it says you and i became caminantes thousands and thousands of steps we took around this land until the day we found and then it kind of goes into the library but you see like people with signs saying yes we can si se puede hear our voices power to the people so there's a lot of ways that you can take this book and kind of branch off into different topics and directions and the book in some ways is sort of like an um like an autobiography by the author because then when you get to the end of the book that you read the little informational flap it talks about the author and how she you know first came to the united states um you know when she was getting ready to marry her husband and how um she didn't speak english didn't understand it and how she missed her home country of mexico missed the food the people her job her career and i think that there's so many students that you might encounter maybe if you like myself work in a bilingual um, school or a school that has a bilingual program is that a lot of our students will probably be able to make some text to self connections and you know even you know our students from puerto rico who moved to connecticut they for some of them um they obviously come here and they don't speak any english and for them it's so overwhelming and they don't understand anything anyone's saying to them you know outside of their classroom teacher or you know spanish speaking staff that they might work with but this book can be a really great book to read with those students and let them see that yes you're gonna encounter some challenges but if you're a dreamer and you have that perseverance and that growth mindset you're you'll get there you can reach an end goal that you are maybe setting for yourself or aspirations that you really strive to accomplish in your lifetime so i don't think students are ever too young to start teaching them about what does it mean to have perseverance and to overcome challenges and obstacles and so i love this book i don't know i'm assuming that they maybe have this book in spanish i don't know this one is in english but there's um like spanish words sort of sprinkled throughout the book but um the other two books i have that i wanted to share with you guys they are in or they're bilingual so they're english and spanish and um so my idea for this sort of big culminating project is i want to go into this um classroom the third grade bilingual classroom in my building and i am planning to do um over the course of time lessons once a week with the students so the first lesson that we're going to do is we're going to read this book about dreamers and talk a little bit about it talk about the meaning of the book um kind of what is the author's message and then what I'm thinking I might do as well is I might create, I'm, my goal is to create a Google Classroom with these students where um, when I go in, they'll have like a set space where they log on to like their individual um, page and they have to work and respond to questions or um, complete like responses. So I might 
start off with either just doing a class discussion with them on this book or having them log into like the online um, classroom and answer some questions maybe how do you connect with the um, the characters in the story how, what were some similarities that you have or differences so that might be one way that I'm planning to sort of initiate the project with them but then from there what I'll do is after that the next week I'm gonna go in and we'll read a different book so I have two books um, for their students and they're both the same sort of theme but I guess you could say sort of two different topics um, so the first book is both of these books were written by um, the author Na Naibe Reynoso and illustrated by Joan Leal. And this book, I'm so excited for these books. I, these I absolutely love. This one is called Be Bold, Be Brave. And again, these are bilingual, so they're in English and Spanish. So the Spanish part is Se Audaz, Se Valiente. And it's 11 Latinas who made US history. So I love that, especially for the fact that it's all about Latina, so all about influential females who really made a mark on history and um and and it covers so many so it covers selena quintanilla who's in this book so mexican-american there's um puerto ricans there's people of mexican descent there, there's so many different um cultures um dominican and i'm really excited for this book because the book it's it's really cutely written if that's even a word but it's written in a really nice way where um one page it's in spanish and then the other page is in english so it says the same thing in english and spanish and it has adorable little illustrations um of the individuals so for example here we have selena and kind of her iconic that purple outfit that if you are hispanic you I think immediately when you might think of Selena Quintanilla, that's like one of the um, first outfits that you think of when you think of her. Uh, but it talks about, you know, the person and a little bit about them. And it covers everything from, you know, musicians to artists to astronauts. So the first um, female Latina astronaut who went into space and how she was an astronaut and an inventor, um, a famous librarian and author, Sonia Sotomayor, so famous um, judge. And then there's, you know, someone who was a famous award-winning journalist, the first female U.S. surgeon general, which I think is so awesome. So I'm really excited. And I think what I love about this is it covers so many different um, careers as well. So like, for example, in our building, in, in that classroom, we have one student who um, the classroom teacher was actually telling me that this student, her dream is to become a doctor. And she's so bright and so smart. And and I generally think if she, you know, stays determined and works hard at school to, you know, do well and study and focus on, you know, her, her academics, I really see her persevering and making it to become a future female doctor. And um, I'm really excited that this book actually features a doctor because my end project that I have in mind is once we get through the books, I'm going to assign each of the students a, a person from the book and then that student is then going to have to go on and research that that person and um, either read books if I can find books on that individual or sharing with them some um, online websites where they can go and get some research and find some facts out about that person so when I saw that this had a female doctor already I knew I was like I am assigning that girl this person and this is going to be who she has to do her research project on um, and then you have like famous artists so this book is so awesome and famous activists so that, again it talks about so many different types of careers and um there's politicians artists activists and then what i love about the book is at the end it's sort of like a drawing of a mirror and then it says you and i, I love this message so it says although you've reached the end of this book your story is next just go to the mirror and take a look if there are things in the world you want to see different you can change them for sure don't be indifferent be brave, be bold, be courageous, because your destiny is also greatness. Like all of these women who weren't afraid, so go out into the world and just remember, be brave. So I think this is such a fantastic way to talk again, kind of circling back to having grit, having determination, having a growth mindset, and overcoming any challenges that you um, might encounter. So this is one book that we'll do. So the first week, like I said, the first week we'll read this book. This book is called Dreamers. And then from there, the following week, I will read one of these books with the students. So this one is the one about 11 influential Latinas who made their mark on history. And then the book after that that I'll read with the students the following week is this book. And this one is called Fearless, Fearless Trailblazers, 
Pioneros Audaces, 11 Latinos Who Made U.S. History. And this book is exactly the same as this one, only it's featuring um, influential Hispanic males that made their mark. And um, this one is hard hardcover. I, to be honest, I don't know if this one was available in hardcover. I just ordered it kind of without really paying attention. Um, but this one is a hardcover book. And again, I love the illustrations and it features astronauts. So Latinos who were astronauts, scientists and inventors. So again, you see it right away covers different um, professions professional baseball players so this one i'm excited because we have a little boy from puerto rico who oh my gosh this boy loves sports he loves um, basketball baseball football and he um is always wearing a jersey of the uh, uh the baseball team from puerto rico so as soon as i saw that they had a baseball player i already was like i'm assigning him this person that he has to research because i think that he's going to be really motivated and I think when you kind of take that time to understand your students and you understand what are their passions what are they interested in um we have some students who are amazing artists so right away it's like I want to assign the person that's an artist to that student because I think it shows them too that if they're a little bit more invested because they share some of the passions well already that's part of the project what are some similarities this woman became the first female U.S. general doctor and I want to become a doctor so right away you're teaching them someone a, a role model i guess you could say someone influential who made their mark and showing that student that you know that could be you one day if you're willing to put in the work and um overcome you know if you make a mistake or obstacles to get there this one again it features um carlos santana so famous musicians civil rights activists cesar chavez um and it, the books, the pages give like a little blurb about that person, fashion, Asco de la Renta. So it's just, I love this book. There's a famous artist, Jean Michael um, Basquiat. I don't know if I'm saying his last name correctly, but he was a Haitian and, or of Haitian and Puerto Rican descent. There's again, journalists, civil rights activists, award-winning actors for the students to understand, politicians. And this book, similar to the um, one with the females, it ends with a mirror and talking about um, you making your mark. This one, it's written a little different. So this one says, now look into the mirror. What's reflecting back your way? Perhaps Julian, Le Manuel, Carlos, Ricardo, or Jose? The answer is you, kind, compassionate, and smart, loving, deserving, whole, and complete. You have a real big heart. So go out and be fearless. Show your talents. Don't be shy. The world deserves your gifts. There are a million reasons why. Like all the fearless trailblazers who are now known far and wide, you have unlimited potential, so let your passion be your guide. So I love the messages behind these books, and I think that the author and the illustrator did such a fantastic job. And the other thing I like about the book, too, which I think is going to work really nice for um, sort of my culminating project, is at the back of the book, each book, the one for females and males, incorporates this page. So it's um, the bibliography page that it has websites so for each influential person in the book there's a website that you can go to learn more about that person so i think what i'm planning to do kind of thinking long term and goal is my vision is to create like i said a google classroom and then from there myself and the classroom teacher will work together and we'll assign each student a a person from the book so a male or you know female from one of the um biographies and then what we'll do is after each student gets assigned, I'm going to create a template on Google Slides and then I will share out a separate copy of the template to each student so that they have a designated space to work in. And then from there, the students are going to have to do use some technology and I am going to, um, for them, I'll sort of take the time ahead of time to um, provide each of them the website. So I'll maybe in their slide create a link that they can click on to get to that website for that person. And then I'll have um, sort of like clipboards for the students with a physical piece of paper where they'll have to do some research and take some notes to answer some specific questions that I want them, you know, to cover, like, where was this person born? Um, what was their date of birth? What were they famous for? Um, you know, things like what was their first language? And, you know, ways for them to, the students ideally to sort of over time make connections that, well, this person was just like me and, you know, Spanish was their first language and they, were a famous doctor like I want to be or they were a famous artist they were a famous um politician and I want to be a lawyer you know whatever their their aspirations are so 
I want them to have to answer those questions like what was their job or what was their career um where did they live and that way too the students now they're making connections they're connecting to their research they're going to be more invested in it and then at the end what the students are going to do is they're going to present so then the next following step would be that the students are going to present um, on their influential person so they'll share out with their class their peers and then what I want to do I've done this in the past and it always comes out so cute and I really want to do that with this this class as well is I want to videotape each of the students so I'm planning to kind of create a nice little space like a location in the school where one at a time I can have the students come and we'll record them reading their projects so what I might do for them is create like um sort of one final template like just a one page template where they'll have to fill in some blanks of their influential person and then at the end what I'll do is I want to like print out a picture of, in color of each of the people that our students are researching and then kind of have it sort of displayed and then the student can stand next to it read their um their sort of script on their person and then from there I'm planning to take all of that put it together in a movie format and then at the end of our culminating project the students will watch a sort of movie where and I'm I want to if I can um find like songs and music from you know their singers in the books and incorporate that so it'll have like music it'll have each of the influential people um finding real life pictures of those people and including it in the slideshow or like the movie and then having them watch it at the end and I think that they'll be so excited for that too I did something similar for Hispanic Heritage Month after the students um we read a book about Selena Quintanilla and then afterwards the students had to fill in like a little um kind of like a template or a worksheet that I provided them where they had to write about like why was she so important why was she so famous um kind of what did she do what was sort of her mark on on the world in terms of music in terms of her um all of the things like she would give money to schools and she valued education so they were able to recognize and connect to that and then afterwards the classroom teacher actually um, had the students come out into the hallway and she recorded them sharing what they learned about Selena and then from there I had her send it to me and then I put together a music and it was it came out so beautifully it had the music of hers in it it had pictures of Selena um, performing and singing and um, receiving awards and then it went into um, each of the students videos and then it ended with a few more kind of slideshow pictures of her and some songs and I I think back to that day and I like I literally wanted to cry as we watched it together as a class and even the classroom teacher was saying that it made her almost get emotional in, in a positive way because we, we started off playing the music and you know some of the students right away were like oh I, I know this song and um it was her song Como La Flor and um what was the other song I picked I think it was Bitty Bitty Bum Bum maybe was the other song but um it was so beautiful because as the music was playing and then I also while the students were working on the project I had taken pictures of the students doing their writing piece and working together and then I included that in the slideshow as well so as the music played you saw pictures of the kids working and um participating in the activity that day and the students like the teacher we had the lights off so that they could see the screen and the music playing and some of the students started you know saying about wow she's so beautiful or, oh my gosh I love this song or my grandma plays this song my aunt plays this song and they softly started singing this song and the teacher and I just looked at each other and we were like this is amazing and it, we literally almost like started crying because it was just so beautiful to watch and I was so excited for them to learn of someone who was influential and did a lot more than just make amazing music but really had an important cause that she was working behind and um so that you know kind of long-winded video but that sums up my project for um my students in that third grade bilingual classroom and how we're going to tie in culture we're going to tie in social emotional learning with perseverance growth mindset grit determination goals overcoming challenges um and then also coming up with maybe coping skills that you can use if if you're becoming frustrated or if you know you're trying to work towards something and you know you keep experiencing blocks along the way how can you overcome those challenges so a perfect way to tie in coping skills also academics because we're tying in expository writing we're tying in research we're tying in biographies technology um so there's so much that's going into this project and this will take us you know a few weeks to do but i can't wait to share more with you guys and um my hope is to share maybe some like 
updates and posts on my Instagram page along the way of sort of where we are in the project and how it's going and um, I can't wait for you guys to see more so I hope that maybe this sparked an idea for some of you who work with you know students in the elementary school even this would be a really great project for middle school even high school and you can obviously like modify and adapt the project based on the grade level that you're working with but I'm just generally so excited for this project and I can't wait and um, my aunt is really excited for this as well. And I think the students are going to get so excited once they start getting assigned their person and doing their research. And I can't wait to see how they grow as researchers, as learners. And um, I don't know, I'm just really excited. So I will end it here. I hope you guys have a fantastic Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Take some time for self care today and have a fantastic, easy ride back to work tomorrow in the morning if you're returning to work like I am and I'm wishing you a smooth Monday. So I will see you guys in the next one. Take care and let me know if you have done a lesson like this or if you have these books, how you might use these books with your students or with your children at home, I'd love to know. Or if you have other book recommendations for me as well that would tie in nicely with my bilingual students. I, if you can't tell, I love using books, so I'd love any new recommendations. Bye guys and I'll see you in the next one.